Well, why would I need to come to your house with all the backup? So you just want me to come over so we could fight? When a man threatens Trooper Darren Cooper to a gunfight, I can hear a female in the background yelling. Oh, uh, yeah. The fate of a hostage could hang in the balance. Come out without any weapons or tacos. Come outside. Come outside. Hey, come out over here. Hey, show me your hands. Put your hands up. Go down. In southeast Alaska. Well, the calf is bleeding too. The calf just went down. The hunt for reckless poachers puts wildlife trooper John Sinian on thin ice. Man, this might not be good. It's only three inches thick. Ooh. Ice is cracking. There's water seeping up. And the victim of a brutal assault. He need me in the face about two to three times, and I was probably punched in the face about eight. Leads trooper Jesse Lopez to a suspected drug trafficker's lair. I'm going to seize the house, and I'm going to kick you guys out, and I'm going to find the drugs in your couch. This is Alaska State Troopers. Don't move! Don't move! Put your hands up! It's October in Glen Allen. Caribou season. Like a bunch of cows and calves to me. And wildlife trooper John Simeon is ready for the opening weekend. He's patrolling southeast Alaska's Copper River hunting grounds, where the breathtaking terrain teems with wild animals foraging before the big freeze. It's a great time to be out hunting right now. We're already seeing lots of activity. A boom in this year's caribou means more than 2,000 extra hunting permits. With more tags and more permits comes more hunters. Some of these hunters are not exactly seasoned Alaskan big game hunters. A lot of them are brand new to Alaska. A lot of them are hunting caribou for the first time. A lot of unsafe hunting practices. We've seen gentlemen trying to fire off rounds from the top of their motorhome, stopping their vehicle in the middle of the highway, shooting from their windows and their trucks. I mean, you're just asking for disaster. Today, Trooper Simeon's patrolling the region's newly frozen lakes, which give the migrating caribou a shortcut. Well, we got a little herd of caribou coming across. But it also makes them easy targets. When we drove by earlier, there were two or three vehicles parked there. There's a couple of decent bulls in this group, so I imagine there's a bunch of guys lined up, ready to start blasting away at this herd as they get close to the, this side of the ice. I'm going to jump out here, go down on the ice, and check if I can get a good look-see from there. But before Simeon can get a good vantage point... Oh, they already shot one. A gunman claims his prize. Uh -oh. Somebody already shot the bull. But that's not all Trooper Simeon spots on the ice. Well, the calf is bleeding, too. It's illegal to kill a caribou that hasn't reached maturity. Ugh. Why'd why they shoot the calf? The calf just went down. The first lead bull is down, and we know there's a small calf down behind it. But let's get up there to make sure those hunters don't leave. Two downed caribou puts this hunter over his legal limit, and Simeon fears the shooter might run like a startled deer. Going, folks. So who's the shooter? Down there. Down there? We didn't know he was even there. Oh, really? This kid here was lined up and ready to shoot him, and all of a sudden he blasts out of nowhere. We didn't see it there. There he is, right there. He sees us, plainer than hell, right now. Are you the shooter? I shot. Can take a look at your hunting license and your tags, please. I, 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 I tags over here. Okay. So you didn't have it on you when you were out hunting? No, I just. My first to carry with her. Okay, well, just let you know when you're hunting, you have to have your permits and tags on you. It's a mistake that'll cost this new hunter a $250 fine. Yeah. News that has him on edge. Oh, I'm just, I'm you got any more rounds in that gun? How about you uh, empty out that chamber for me real quick? So why don't you tell me uh, what happened there when you when you pulled the trigger? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Just plain sight. He was just by himself. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the one behind him. Okay. And it, it shot. I seen it, I hit him, so I stopped. Next thing I know, I seen the other one staggering, I'm going, oh, gosh, I need to hit the other one. Okay. Although he shot the calf accidentally, the man is still on thin ice. You didn't wait for them to get any closer? Or? No, like, like I said, my first one. All right, so how thick do you think that ice is out there? Well, you know, like I said, I didn't even think about it. Okay, so what do you think's gonna happen if you can't get to that animal, if it's too thin or unsafe for you to get to it? Wait, why not? That's why a lot of these guys were sitting here waiting for them to get a lot closer. 
If the hunter can't get to the caribou, he'll not only lose his gun, he'll also face up to a $10,000 fine and a year in jail for failing to harvest the meat of a downed animal. All right, I'm going to seize your gun just for right now for my safety and yours and everybody else's. And uh, we'll all go out and check if we can safely get to those animals, all right? Both prizes lie in the middle of the newly frozen lake. Lead bull is probably over 300 yards, and the calf is probably 400 plus. We're going to check if we can at least get out to these animals. You know, but I'm not going to put his life in jeopardy or mine or anybody else's to recover a caribou. To play it safe, Trooper Simeon relies on an old native Alaskan trick of the trade. I'm going to cut down a couple of these long poles, so if I do fall in, at least a pole will stop me from falling all the way through. A little trick my dad taught me when I was a kid. Man, this might not be good. Yeah. You can tell it's only three inches thick. I want you to stay here for me. And the thickness of the ice can vary with each step. Wow, man, it's only about an inch thick right here. A plunge into these freezing waters could kill Simeon in minutes. Ooh, ice is cracking. There's water seeping up through these cracks. Man, we're so close. And this way. And then crack here about maybe an inch. Finally, he reaches the caribou. Oh. But it's too heavy to move. You might have to gut it. It's up to the shooter to venture out and gut the animal on the ice. It gets really thin right where you are. Just follow my track. There's a really soft spot right there. There you go, just like that. Now, Trooper Simeon will head out further to try to retrieve the calf. I can even walk. Last year, right over here, same time of the year, I watched eight caribou fall in, just like this, and they all drowned. You can see cracks where the caribou are stepping from their hooks hitting. There's water seeping up. Right here is like an inch. And I'm covered in caribou blood, skimming the crust. Two inches of ice. As the afternoon sun beats down on the ice, Simeon picks up his pace, tracing his trusty path back to shore. <sighs> Safe on land, he can now examine the calf to find the fatal bullet. You can see this guy, the bullet, passed through on the big bull and hit this little calf. You gotta see the, the blood stain out there left by this thing bleeding out like it did. It looks like a, where's that horror movie where they dump all the pig blood on that girl? Whatever that one movie is, it looks like that one. The ice held for the calf, but the men may not be so lucky with the 300-pound bull. You can see right here, it's only like eh, two, three inches thick. The ice just popped really loud and cracked, so I think it was just a weak spot in the ice, and I went around it, so we can't even move the other one. It's so heavy. The ice is so slick. He's going to try and gut it. And we'll yank on it. Check we can yard it back here. Let's get his head up like this. There you go. Okay, now you can just grab those guts. Okay, he's reaching there, and yep. Cut along. After 30 minutes on the ice, I get away from the blood a little bit. The gutted carcass is strapped and ready. Let's get a run at it and see if we can go. Ready? One, two, three. Just can't move. We need a helicopter and a really skinny guy who's really in shape and young. I have him do all the work for me. They drag the animal over 300 yards safely back to solid ground. But the shooter is still in over his head. So let's talk about how we need to take care of this now. Basically, you've taken an over limit of caribou, whether it's a calf, bull, world record, whatever it is. You got a drawing bull tag, and your permit has to be on you. It, I mean, you can't hunt unless your permit is on you. You know, so, but the big thing we have right now is you over limit of caribou. So I'm gonna have to cite you for over limit of caribou. Um, so horrible. And rightfully so. I mean, uh, first mistake you made was shooting it that far on the ice. This lesson could come with a price, but Trooper Simeon cuts him a break. The hunter's cooperation after the kill sways Simeon to return his rifle and let him keep the bull caribou. He knows where he's sitting. He's made peace with himself and what he's done. He's going to have to pay a fine. He's going to come back to Glen Allen Court. Um, under the black and white letter of the law, we can take both animals. We have to do our job. We have to do what's right. I believe the right thing right now is to let him keep the animal that he had taken. The folks right now are having a hard enough time trying to fill their freezers. We don't need to make it any harder on them. You know, there's always a fear in going out on thin ice. I don't care who you are. If you think at any given time, if you become complacent enough to think that you're so good that fear is not an option in your in your judgment, then you should retire. You should quit. You should go do something else. There should always be an amount of fear in anything you do. Because in this profession, in anything you do, 
You could be dead tomorrow. Whether out in the field or in the urban streets, the risk of being a trooper is just as grave. In this job, it's hell. We can't eliminate all risk. If we want to eliminate all the risk, we'd sit in our offices and let everyone else sort out their issues. But that's not going to happen. Call the 18 back on. 18. 18, I had that mail back on 21. I've never put them through to myself. A drunk and highly trained ex-military scout is itching for a gunfight. What can we help you with tonight? Why, why are you calling the Alaska State Troopers? Why would I need to come to your house with all the backup? Do you have a lot of guns at your house? So you just want me to come over so we can fight? Where exactly do you live? Well, you're, you're, you're telling me that you want me to come to your house, but you're not telling me where to go. We're too afraid. We're too afraid to show up. You're absolutely right. Oh, okay, thanks. Basically, all he wanted us to do was come over and fight. He made some comments that I, I better bring all of my backup. You know, we'll leave him alone. We don't want to put him in a position or ourselves in a position where we're going to get hurt. But the man won't take no for an answer. We got back in touch with the male. I could hear a female in the background yelling. Oh, uh, okay. He's called back now and he said that uh, he has a hostage, so we don't know if he's bluffing or not, but basically you have to take him at his word at this point. We got back in touch with the male. I could hear a female in the background. He's called back now and he said that uh, he has a hostage. A drunk dialing gunman may be luring troopers into a trap. We don't know if he's bluffing or not, but we have to take him at his word at this point. Our hostage is our top priority. Reports that he hit somebody with a knuckle and they are unconscious. Oh, God. The male is saying that he is going to be sitting outside. Mac 180. We're at our target location. Troopers strategize to rescue the captive girlfriend. It looks like it's a fourplex. Mm -hmm. There's one light on on a lower apartment. Sure. He said he, he may have some guns. He said basically bring all your backup. Um, I'm going to take all you guys out. That's all we got. We need to go set up perimeter. How about you, Calhoun, and Vic go to the rear? Ricky and I will take the front. The shooter could have his weapon trained on any one of them. 2018. I just had an open line with the male. He sounds extremely tired. He stated that you're too late. Was there any other voices in the background? Negative 18. It was an open line for quite some time. Troopers desperately need to get inside the house. You guys make your way around the back. And then Frederick and I and uh, Ricky will be up front. But there's only one way in, and it puts them square in the gunman's crosshairs. We're going to assume that he is uh, armed and dangerous until he proves otherwise. We can't go into situations thinking that folks aren't armed, because quite frankly, they are. Troopers hide in the cover of darkness while dispatch tries to reconnect with the man. We just saw him in the back window, smoking a cigarette here or something. Else. Front door is wide open on the uh, duplex. What's that noise coming As day begins to break... No, we pick up the phone. Our negotiators haven't been able to get a hold of him on the phone. So I'm going to use my loudspeaker and attempt to get a hold of him. Troopers attempt to make contact. This is the Alaska State Trooper. Outside of your place. We're here to check on you. Make sure you're okay. Make sure anyone else inside your house is okay. Call 911 back to us. You can also come out on your front door without any weapons to talk to us as well. Window just moved. Open a bit. I see you on the window. You can talk to us. Come out and talk to us. Let us know that you're okay. Let us know that you don't want to hurt us or anyone else here. Oh, front door. Front door. Hey, I'm moving here. On the front door. Hey, come out over here. Hey, come talk to us. Come out outside. Need you to come. Walk down and over to your left. Show them your hands. Come outside. Show them your hands. Hey, come outside. Make sure you bring your hands out of your pocket, brother. Come. Come. Come outside. Show them your hands. Come outside. Come over here. The man they've been watching isn't their suspect. It's his roommate. Who else in the house? I have no idea. Where's the person? I don't know. Did you see uh, leave? No. So you came out of the house today yeah. to come out and talk to us. We gotta check the room to see if he was in there. No. It's time for the showdown. Unfortunately, we need to do something. 38. Making the entry into the apartment. You got the far corner. Stay 
State Trooper, speak to me now. After an all-night stakeout, troopers move in on the apartment. State Troopers! State Troopers! State Troopers! State Troopers, speak to me now! State Troopers! State Troopers! Come out. But the suspect's not there. He fled before troopers arrived, leaving his cell phone behind. Uh, that's fine. Fine. 15 missed calls from a private number. All that work. No dice. He was not inside the residence, so it's unknown if he was watching from the bushes or if he was just not there at any point in time. There's no telling where he or his hostage girlfriend are now. Troopers can only hope he's not on a rampage. Later that night, the suspect's girlfriend calls the troopers. I had a phone call, so he's going to make sure he's okay. She's safe and unharmed, and her boyfriend's ready to face the music. It's good that uh, no one was hurt. But now it's time to hold him accountable for what he did. Hey, how's it going? So, uh, what, what was going on? I have your cell phone, by the way. I woke up sleeping over here, Chris. Like you were woke up in the woods? Yeah. So you don't remember calling us? Here's the thing, okay? We obviously, we can't have you calling up our police department. We can't have you making threats. We can't have you telling us that you have hostages. So, unfortunately, tonight, you're going to come with me to jail, okay? So, do me a favor. Turn around. Put your hand behind your back for me. He basically, he told me that he was drunk and he didn't remember anything, and that doesn't mean that you get a free pass to just go out in the, the public and cause whatever type of problem that you want because you're drunk. So, that's not a valid excuse, and we're not going to take it as such. Trooper Cooper gets one menace off the streets. While across town, Trooper Lopez races to round up another. 20-something-year-old that uh, got jumped by two individuals. They all kind of know each other. You know, in the wintertime, people are kind of cooped up in the houses, and something happened, somebody said something, and it led to a fight. Medics and Wasilla police are already on scene, tending to a bruised and bloodied complainant. Hey, partner. Looks like you uh, got the worst of it, huh? Yeah, I got jumped. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. They stole my cell phone as well. And you know who these guys are, right? Yeah, I know right where they live. They, they're, they used to be my friends. All right, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and step right out here and let me get some photos for these guys. Start cleaning you up. I already cleaned off the main amount of blood. My entire face was covered. Right. And my lips. My lip ring was red. You see your hands? You put your hands out for me like that. <coughs> That's my blood. Okay, turn them over. <coughs> The victim tells a harrowing tale of horseplay gone wrong. He was trying to take clear tape and put it over my mouth. And he, we were just messing around. We started to wrestle. And he put me in an arm lock and he started to choke me. And I told him, if you don't stop choking me to where I can't breathe, I'm going to punch you. We fell to the floor. I was released. And as soon as I was released, I was attacked by both of them. They threw me down the stairs, kneed me in the face about two to three times. And I was probably punched in the face about eight times. Which phone got stolen? What's the number? Uh, the Galaxy S. It's a $500 phone. They fell out okay. of my pocket during the fight. Okay, fell and out? He picked it up and ran off into the river. The phone's value makes the theft a felony. And there may be more charges on the line. Just so you know, there's a stash spot in the couch where they keep weed. There's and a stash spot? Drugs. Yeah, there's a stash spot that folds out. There's a little cabinet and everything. So, the mass dealer, no, he always had to go over there and I see it happen all the time. All right, well, we're going to go over there and see if we can make contact and kind of go from there. Medics treat the man for a broken nose and lacerated hands and face. But Trooper Lopez isn't taking his tail at face value. I don't know if he was actually the individual that started the fight. Really, I've only got half of the story at this point. And getting the other half could be a problem. If drugs are in the house, the tenants won't be putting out the welcome mat. It's going to be kind of hard to, to go in. They're telling me there's... 12 or 14 people inside the house. We'll go with uh, a little extra just to make sure that we can maintain the scene. But even before they enter the building, let's sneak up on them now. Yeah. Troopers get a hint of what's in store. Oh. Yep, I see that. There's pot right here in the car. Troopers know the occupants are violent drug users and approach the house prepared for a fight. Say, troopers. 
Yeah. I know why you guys are here. Who are you? I am the guy who assaulted. Yeah. We need to kind of figure out what's going on, man. Can you please get that light on my own? Well, let's go inside. Can I at least pop in here to make sure you're not grabbing a weapon? Who else is in the house? Nobody's going to jump out with a shotgun, right? Trooper Lopez quickly discovers the scene of the brawl. I see blood on the floor. That looks like it's fresh stuff. While troopers confiscate the drugs outside, Lopez questions the alleged attackers. What happened? Like, I put him in a chokehold, you know, just a normal idea. He, like, swings up and hits me in the eye. So I'm going to shine a light in your face here real quick and see if there's anything here. He punches you while you've got him in a chokehold? Yeah. Turns out Lopez's original suspicions were right. Several witnesses claim the complainant was the aggressor. According to the witnesses, my complaint is the one that threw the first punch. That only leaves the matter of the missing and presumed stolen phone. What about his galaxy? Where is it at? I don't know. I have no idea. Is so, well, it's going to go bad for both of you then. How's it going to go bad for both of you? Yeah, you were involved in the assault that took place where the phone was stolen. Okay, well, I'm not going down for something that's stupid. You don't have no phone. Well, I don't have a choice. I'm going to go ahead and jar the phone and I'm just going to take it. I don't care what you say. I understand. I don't know anything about the phone. Okay. The man won't admit to stealing the phone. Here's the deal. If I don't wind up with a phone... What I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to seize the house and I'm going to apply for a search warrant and I'm going to find the drugs in your couch because I know they're in there. You don't believe me? Go search my room right now. Trooper Lopez takes him up on his offer, but he can't find evidence of the phone or the drugs in the mess. I'm not digging through all that crap. Troopers have an easier time tracking the owner of the drug-filled car. So, is that my girlfriend's car? No, me and my girlfriend have no vehicle. At least this call won't be a complete bust. Some other members that actually live in the residence identified who owned the vehicle. Troopers cite the vehicle owner for possession of marijuana. With drug charges in the air, the rest of the household suddenly starts to cooperate. Uh, we went inside, made contact with the individuals that were involved in the assault. You know, people were willing to tell me where the phone might be. They don't want any part of it because they don't want to go to jail. We couldn't get anybody to admit taking the phone. You know, unfortunately, in this career, it's uh, not what you know, it's what you can prove. Trooper Lopez didn't find what he was looking for. But the next morning, Trooper Cronin stumbles on something he didn't see coming. That guy's just sitting in the middle of the street back there, and I don't know why. I'm going to turn around and check that dude out. People don't park like that without a reason. Trooper Cronin wants to find out what it is. And he saw me turn around, and now he's moving. What the heck is he doing? Where are you going, dude? Where are you going? A suspicious car is driving Trooper Cronin to investigate. Where are you going, dude? Just pull over wherever, guy. Now he's on the sidewalk. Finally, the vehicle pulls to a stop. The reason I pulled you over is that I saw you. you were just stopped in the middle of the road back there. Is everything all right? Oh, yeah, everything was fine. I didn't notice I was in the road so bad. I'm sorry. Okay, that's right. You got your driver's license, vehicle registration, proof of insurance? Um, yeah. Got any weapons in the vehicle besides your uh, angry dog right here? Oh, no. All right, just a type for a couple minutes. I'll be back with you here in a second. Cronin runs him through dispatch. NCIC 1B43. He's just weird. He said he was stopped in the middle of the road because he was talking to Napa about a paint issue with his car. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd probably wait until I was in a parking lot or something like that. Is some probation reconditions? Temporal. What are his probation conditions? No unauthorized contact with felons, drug users, traffickers, do not possess alcohol, drug paraphernalia, or illegal controlled substances. This is a drug guy. His strange behavior and criminal history give Trooper Cronin a reason to call his probation officer. It doesn't look like he's impaired by anything, but uh, he's just acting all strange. And then when I hit my lights, it took a really long time to uh, pull over. The PO gives Cronin the green light to search the vehicle. Here, put your hands behind your back. You're not going to jail or anything like that. But just during the search, I'm going to detain you, okay? There isn't anything in here that I need to be worried about, is there? Okay. Cronin searches for signs that the driver's back to his old ways. All right, everything looks pretty good. I have to call uh, your probation officer because I did find a, uh, a burnt marijuana joint. You sure about that? It was in your uh, glove box. I don't need to smoke marijuana. We're going to call your probation officer. A burnt joint is a parole violation that can put him behind bars. Hey, how's it going? It's Trooper Cronin again. He had a uh, burnt marijuana joint in the glove box. All right, bye-bye. 
Per probations, you have to report to the Palmer Probation Office at 8 a.m., okay? Trooper Cronin leaves him with a stern warning. Just make sure that there's nothing in there that if uh, we get another situation like this, that you're going to get in trouble and end up going to jail on. All right, man? Thank you. He's less than pleased. Most convicted criminals are lucky to get a break. But some criminals don't learn. Later that month, Trooper Lopez makes a traffic stop of his own. We're going to go and stop this guy real quick. Nothing major. He's just got no headlights in the safety corridor. As Lopez approaches, he sees the driver quickly stash something. So what all was in there? Just a trash. Was it? Yeah, I swear. Just... Mind if I have it? It's the same man Trooper Cronin found the joint on. I did find a, uh, a burnt marijuana joint. Man, I don't know where that came from. I don't even smoke pot. Can you just hand me the trash? You're just making me really nervous when you're bouncing around, moving all the way around. So. God, okay, officer, I gotta be completely honest with you. Okay, go ahead and be completely honest. I'm on probation right now. Uh huh. And I have, just, it's just pot. But I have a job that I've just started working out with in like the last three weeks. I got a brand new baby. I can't, I can't even talk to my PO. I'm so nervous right now. I'm so scared. Yeah, I could see your hands were shaking when I first came up the it's first time. It's pot, I swear to God, and this never happens. But Trooper Lopez discovers more than a loose joint. This time, the driver's got six baggies of marijuana. It looks like he's dealing. What is this? It's just a weighing pot. I just, I just had it. Are I you selling it or what? No, no, I just bought them all for, my, for myself. For me and, yeah, my, me and my sister and my mom. And, yeah, I don't even smoke pot. I mean, really. But the scale doesn't weigh in his favor. It suggests this guy set his sights on selling, and Lopez isn't buying his story. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give your PO a call. We're going to find out what he wants to do, okay? And so you, no, he, you don't understand. He's going to throw me in jail. I have to give him a call. I mean, there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, that's just the bottom line. We have to give him a call. But let me talk to him and see what he comes up with, okay? He's going to throw me in jail. Even with solid evidence against him, the man continues blowing smoke. Go ahead and grab a seat right here. You don't have anything else on you? No, sir. I don't know how long. Well, I mean, you've got a, you've got a scale in here. I mean, you know. It was just to make sure that they were right. But there's nothing right about this. And to check with the driver's PO leaves no room for negotiation. I talked to the PO. Okay, I can cite you for the mix six, but he's going to do a parole or a probation violation. So we're going to, I have to take you in. I got to go to jail tonight? Yeah, you got to go tonight. come on. But the man's looking at more than one night in the slammer. With almost an ounce of pot, this repeat offender could be bunking in prison for a year. You know, obviously, he's trafficking somehow. Either he's buying or he's selling. Buyers don't normally run around with a scale. It sounded like he was actually trying to get his life together or trying to do the right thing, but, you know, the lure of drugs always brings people back. And I guess he couldn't resist the urge. The situation's more urgent south on the Kenai Peninsula, where troopers are on a manhunt. The hunt is on for a man accused of kidnapping an 18-year-old man from a South Anchorage backyard, then forcing the young man at gunpoint to drive to Homer. All available officers comb the area for the kidnapper at large. 29 Seward, Foxtrot, Juliet Gulf. Hoping to get him before he can nab another victim. Suddenly... You got him? Yeah. Where are they at? We're just about ready to fall down through. Someone spots the suspect at a local bar. Troopers swoop in for the arrest. 10 4. 22 on myself for 10 23. Talking to Trooper Comfort, it sounds like they had a couple units sold that way. Unsure of what he's heading into, Trooper Tillman races to apprehend a suspected kidnapper. It's kind of the name of the game. You don't really know what you're going to come upon a lot of times until you're there, and you're kind of forced to figure it out while you're in the hot seat. He rushes to back up the other units already on scene. 20 feel myself at 10 What's going on, guys? We got a call that this guy matched the kidnapping suspect from earlier. He generally does. He's about 6'2", uh, probably 220 pounds, all head. Did you already run him? I did. He's got 1098 for being hostile, which he, he did get a little fired up there. Was he drunk? Uh, he has been drinking, yeah. They compare the man's photo ID with their photo of the suspected kidnapper. I agree. Pretty close. Pretty close. The description included a tattoo on his arm. Can see your left arm there, that. It's the same. And his story sounds fishy. Where were you at earlier today? Uh, Kenai Dock. Kenai Dock all day long? All day. Were you dead nothing or commercial fishing? We just went down there, took showers. Well, we didn't take showers because it was a 12 person wait. For the okay, time. I just asked you if you were fishing. I didn't have boots to fish, so we just kind of took a nap and watched people fish. Hang on. 
What was waiting in the truck? What was her name again? Alright. Well, just hold tight. I'm gonna go talk. Okay, I'll be right back over with you. Alright? Hold on to 5 17 10 28. If the woman with him is being held against her will, now is her chance to talk. Hey, is there anything I need to be concerned about? Are you safe? Yes, I Okay. I know for a while. He just wanted to take me away. Okay. We're not originally from here. He just picked me up from Anchorage a couple of days ago. Okay. What are you doing down here then? We came here down to fish. The woman's not the victim, but if her friend's a kidnapper, she could be his accomplice. Do you have a fishing license? Um, not really. Okay. You see that, why that's kind of a weird story? You guys are down here to fish, but you don't have a fishing license? Whatever they're doing here, fishing isn't part of it. They said that they were down here fishing, but uh, I'm inclined to believe people that are down here for the purpose of fishing would probably obtain a license and a personal use permit if they're going to do that. They press the man further. She doesn't have a fishing license, do you? Neither one of us have fished. Okay. You don't have a license, though, do you? You should probably get one if you're going to go fishing, right? His story isn't adding up, but a picture's worth a thousand words. Troopers photograph the suspect's tattoo to see if it matches the kidnappers. Snaps, what does that tattoo sound? It's white cool. So this one that the guy's got on his arm right now is a star. It's about the size of a golf ball or so, but maybe a little bit bigger. I don't know if this is our guy or not, but it's, just, you know, it's kind of an odd coincidence. Okay. The man's tattoo doesn't match the guy they're chasing. He might be guilty of illegal fishing, but he's no kidnapper. I don't think he's involved. It just happened to be a bald guy that's in Kenai drunk. Given the tattoos that he's got, what the suspect possibly had, it seemed like it was pretty inconsistent, but uh, to be determined. So the best we can do is just get good contact info and follow up later if anything else comes up. Back on the hunting grounds in the Copper River Valley, Trooper John Simeon is on his own hunt for the most wanted wildlife criminals of all. Poachers. Taking a caribou illegally is a misdemeanor in the state of Alaska. It's punishable by a maximum fine of $10,000 and or a year in jail. It's a forfeiture of all the equipment used to take the animal illegally. We want people to hunt. We want people to enjoy themselves, but to do it safely and legally. That's the mark of a good sportsman. Compliance with the law and having integrity is doing something right in the absence of others watching you. We test the true integrity of the Alaskan hunter. But some hunters fall short, and Trooper Simeon thinks he's found one. They got dead caribou out there on the ice. And these hunters aren't collecting it. Look like they're kind of sitting back there nonchalantly, but let's go take a look at it. How's it going? How long have you guys been parked here? Uh, we just got here. We were going to call it in, but okay. Uh, I went over to check and see if it's cold and she flagged it down. Okay. Let's go take a look at it. Searching for poachers, Trooper Simeon finds a caribou shot and left behind. That's called wanton waste, the most serious wildlife offense on the books. My shoulder's definitely gone. So it's shot. I imagine right underneath here, I'm going to find me. And right there. The hunter fired and fled. I'm just going to look in here for the bullet. If he can find the bullet, he can match it with the gun, and possibly the hunter who left the animal to waste. Two one right there. Two one right there. Now, all he needs is the shooter, and the most likely suspect is this hunter, the one Trooper Simeon found on scene. Are you folks out hunting right now? Yeah, we are. You got a bull tag? No, I got a grizzly tag. The man might have shot the caribou without a permit and changed his story when Simeon arrived. First, I'd like to go look at all your guns you have in your truck. Okay. It doesn't look good for the suspects. Well, it's similar. Little tiny bullet. That's a little gun. That's pretty close. You know, so you guys didn't at all shoot that caribou. We, were, we just got back from uh, mile 20 Denali Highway. So if we were to take your ammo and shoot it, it wouldn't come back to your gun? No, sir. Simeon gives the suspect the benefit of the doubt and scouts for more clues. This is your track right here? So, so these aren't yours here? No, nope, those aren't mine. He soon discovers a second pair of tracks, leading this investigation in an unexpected direction. Look at this. There's that boot track right there. That's like this. They're probably the shooter's tracks. This man's not the poacher after all, so Simeon allows him to claim the carcass. And uh, you can salvage that animal better than it's going to waste right now. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so what do you think should happen to a guy who does something like that and drives away? Abandoned something like that, man. That's a pretty bad deal. Yep. We used to feed a family for a while. Yep. 
Looking for bullets, troopers try to pick up the trail of the poacher until it gets too dark. A blatant crime like this can't go unanswered. That there is not a mistake. You know, people make honest mistakes all the time. It's what you do after the mistake that counts. If you compound the mistake by making poor decisions, wasting an animal, driving away, as an Alaska wildlife trooper, I have no compassion for somebody who does something like that. The next morning, Simeon resumes his hunt for the wasteful shooter. Okay, what do we have going on here? He comes across a hunter standing in the middle of the road, not where a responsible hunter should be. So how did you find it? I just look at him and I see the rear end from the trees. He could be a poacher who just maimed a caribou. Right there, then follow along. You see her neck? Oh, yeah. Moving all around. All right, well, let me just go take a look at it real quick. A wounded caribou is still a wild caribou, and if cornered, will attack. So Simeon slowly approaches the injured animal. Oh, yeah. Stopping halfway up the hill. That back leg is just really busted up. Even from here, Simeon can tell the animal is in too much pain and must be put down. I'm not going to be able to get a shot off from here. But he only has a pistol. To get a clear shot, he must get dangerously close to the frightened and unpredictable animal. You know, it could potentially charge us and injure us. I've been attacked by an injured caribou. It's already suffering. It's already hyped up because it's injured. It's got predators being us coming up on it. If I was to wound it, it's going to fight. Simeon knows he only has one shot. I can't get a shot off in there. I should go get my long gun, but... <laughs> Look at that back leg. She had to be put down. Uh, she's in way too much pain. We just couldn't let her go. See when I hit her? 40 right between its eyes. It's not feeling any more pain. He finds the only bullet wound came from his own pistol. No one tried to poach this caribou. It fell and broke its leg. You know, the, the way the ice is, we have no snow, we have no anything right now. That could have been an easel slip. I bet you it could have fallen right here. Broke its leg just like one of us would. But this caribou won't go to waste. Trooper Simeon gives the animal to the hunter who spotted her. It's getting harder and harder for the people of Alaska to fill their freezers. Lucky enough, these young folks here have some elderly friends back home who will take the animal. The family will have meat for the winter, and the suffering animal was put out of its misery. All things considered, this makes the best of a sad situation. You can see where it was struggling to move around there. So I made the choice of putting the animal down. It's not hurting anymore. I'm not feeling any more pain.